<sighs> How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Kufla Medzayin, Daf 137, from the Sefer Basra. Friends, oh, Givaldig. Oh, so today we're studying Daf. Uh, we're studying Daf uh, Kufla Medzayin. Mama Shigavat. Here, 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 here's, here's the, here's the thing with that Kuf Lamed Zayn. Um, and so, really, here's the thing with the next three dafs. You ready? Here's, you ready for the thing with the next three dafs? I did Chazara on the next three dafs at a Chasana. I was at a Chasana the other day. Well, not the other day, last night. And, um, so that's where I did Chazara on the next three daf. So, Hopefully I did a good enough job. Part of the part, part of the Daf Kufla Medzayin, Chavi, you won't believe it. Part of Daf Kufla Medzayin, you know who I did Chazara with at the Chasana? Rabbi Yisrael Smith. Rabbi Yisrael was at the Chasana, and we hopped the Rhine. He, uh, he he told me he was figured I'm just gonna look all the way off at the side in the dark corner, and there I'll probably find you. He did, um, but I was very respectful. I. You know, the, the Kala asked me not to learn during the Chuppah. I mostly respected that until the end. Uh, and then there was like a long time where I guess everybody was eating and I was learning with Rabbi Stroll and Jones Rabinowitz and uh, Micah Gordon and anybody else who came into my path. Let's go weiter. Here's Givaldi. Yeah, it's good. You just bring a Gemara to the Chasana and whoever you see, you just open up the Gemara and say, you want to learn? Most people say yes. Alright. Here we go. Um, Alright. Uh, ta- oh, so we're going to get... By the way, is I learned with more people. By the way, I learned with more people. Um, but um, different people on different dots. So as we get to the different sections that I learned with different people, I'll tell you who I learned with. Okay. So, Daf Kuf Lamed Zayin about oh, oh Rabbi Lester was there. What did we? We must learn. I must have learned this shtick with Rabbi Lester because Rabbi Lester was the first of uh, the chaver that I saw at the Chasana. And I, I was Hilo. Was I learning? I was, I was probably learning. I don't know. I can't remember. I was definitely learning with Michael Gordon over there. But we were definitely talking and learning. All right. Um, Rabbi says Abai. Okay, so and after Kuf Lamed Zayin, Amr Aleph about uh, ten fifteen lines in. Omer Abaye says Abai. Ezu Rasha Orum. Who's a sneaky little Rasha? Is that Macy Eitz a Limkor Ben Chosim Kira Ben Shimon Ben Gamil? That is somebody who advises to sell like a Shimon Gamil. Meaning, right? We had the scenario, right, of Nechos Aloch Vachrech Leploni, right? That uh, a guy says uh, to somebody that I'm giving my estate to you, and after you. It's going to go to the next person, right? So though, so Shimon ben Gamliel says, "Look, uh, uh, technically speaking, kinin Paris, kikinin aguf domi, and the first guy owns the property, and technically speaking, right? But the you know, if if he sells it, but the it it um, it, um uh, it's a sale. So if somebody advises somebody else to right that 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 first guy to sell it, so the advisor is a Sneaky little Russia. Umode, shame Nisanon. Where am I? Well, Amr Biochanan. Sorry, I skipped. Okay, Amr Biochanan says Biochanan Alocha Kriv Shimon Gamliel that Alocha is like Rib Shimon Ben Gamliel because of course Biochanan says Kinin Peres Kinin Aguvdom like Rib Shimon Ben Gamliel. Umode, shame Nisanon Bematnos Shchiv Mira Lo Oso Klum. However, he uh, admits. Um, um, I think Reb Shimon Gamliel admits, which is uh, 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 no, come on, come on, come on, come on. Umadu Reb Shimon, yeah, Reb Shimon. So Reb Shimon Gamliel admits, however, that im nisanim b'matnas shchiv mira lo asaklum. That if I guess the first guy gave the um, one second, yeah, yeah. Also, rishim b'matnas shchiv mira. Yeah, that if the first guy 
doesn't sell it to somebody else, but gives that, but gives the uh, uh, estate away to somebody else as a mat I When I die, you'll get it. Well, then lo asaklum, it'll it'll move on to the second guy. It won't go to the buyer. Wow, my brain. I need coffee. I didn't realize how much I needed coffee. My time. How come it will? Well, do we have to give like names and stuff? There's so many guys here. There's Plony and Acharecha and sure, why not? Yaakov Ruvit. Mm, no, but these aren't his kids. That's the thing. Wait, uh, wait. No, yeah. Ugh, I'm saying guy number one, guy number two. Okay, let's do that. So if guy number one sells it uh, to a buyer, so we said it's sold, right? Uh, because because he owns the guy number one owns the pairs. And Kenyan pairs, pairs can Kenyan goof. However, if guy number one gives it to the buyer uh, as a matna, well, not a buyer, but uh, he, he gifts it to somebody as a matna shchibmira that you'll get this estate when I die. So. That would not go to the buyer. It would go to guy number two. And um, my time at how come I'm a buy? Says a buy. Matna shchiv mira lo kono el alacher misa because um, a matna shchiv mira is only kone after death, right? So meaning when guy number one says to uh, uh, the lokeach that uh, you know this is going to be yours when I die. Well, it's only going to become the 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 buyers after guy number one dies. But after guy number one dies. Mela automatically kicks in the stipulation of 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 the giver, the initial guy, which is um, that after guy number one dies, it goes to guy number two. So immediately when guy number one dies, you know it 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 it, it, it immediately goes to guy number two before the buyer would have an opportunity to um, you know take ownership of it. Right. So so meaning guy number two already. Precedes um, the ownership of uh, the lokeach when it comes to a madness shchiv mira. Um, Yom Rabbi Harit, does Rabbi really say that a madness shchiv mira is only kone leachar miso? Right, my brother stated madness shchiv mira. When it comes to madness shchiv mira, meimos I kone. When is it kone? Abai Omer im gemar miso. Bara 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 bara. Abai says it is. Uh, uh, together with the ending, uh, like when he dies, Ke'ilu, it's not after he dies, but when he dies, uh, at that point, the Matna Shriv Mira is Kone. Virove Omar, and Rove says, La'achar Gmar Misa. Um, and Rove says that Matna Shriv Mira is Kone after Gmar Misa. So, one second, we had said a, a minute ago that according to Abaye, Matna Shriv Mira is Kone, La'achar Gmar Misa. However, in this statement, uh, this Machlag between Abaye and Rove, Abaye says, that Mana Shriv Mira is in tandem with um, Gemar Misa. Rabbi Shaw gave me some feedback last night that he wasn't such a big fan of using irresponsible, irresponsibly. <laughs> oh, I knew that was going to be a tricky one. Sorry. Rabbi Amar Lachar Gemar Misa. So how do I abai me ahi? Well, Abaye um, changed his mind, meaning, yes, initially he, he did say that Matna Shriv Mira is Kone in tandem with uh, death. Uh, but later on, he revoided to say that Matna Shriv Mira is Kone Le'achar Misa. How do we know that Abaye changed his mind to say that Matna Shriv Mira is Kone Le'achar Misa? Maybe Fakert, maybe he changed his mind to say that Meaning, maybe the initial one was that Matna Shriv Mira is Kone La'achem Misa, and he changed his mind to say that Matna Shriv Mira is uh, um, um, Kone Toch Kide. What was, what was the Lashin? Of uh, Im Gmar Misa. Maybe that's his final uh, position. Lo Sagadatech, Nit. Sagadatech, Lo Sagadatech, the time because we learned in the mission is Zagitech Im Mati. This is your get. If I die, meaning after I die. This is um, your get if I die from this illness. Or this is your death after I die. Meaning all, uh, you know, uh, ultimately all of these are the Zelbazach, the same thing. He says nothing. So we see that by a get, ain't get So you can't have this, uh, you know, the get cannot take effect. And guess what? The same would apply by Matna Shribmira. Um, 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 ah, interesting. I thought I okay. So the same thing would apply also to Madna Shimra that we're talking about the Achar Misa, and then okay, and that 
it wouldn't work la'achar misa if it goes to the um, second guy. But wait one second. Aha. Uh-huh. So be'etzim, we want to draw a parallel. Aha. Uh-huh. So we want to draw a parallel between the get and the matna shchiv mira. That um, if we're saying that by the get that it's dafka, right? When he says imati, right? What does he say? Is it gitich imati? So we're saying that nonetheless, it's talking about la'achar misa. So the same thing would be by the Matna Shkiv Mira that we're talking about Laachar Misa. Because if Matna Shkiv Mira was, you know, while, right, Im Gemar Misa, so then the same should be uh, Shaykh to a Get also. And if that's the case, then it's not Laachar Misa, in which case it should be fine. So from the fact that by a Get, it means that it's Laachar Misa, so we'll say the same thing by a Matna Shkiv Mira. Okay. Kivaldi. Omar Rib Zayrit says Rib Zayrit. So that, that part up until now, I think I did during the Chosin's Tish. I think I, 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 I finished doing that sugya just as they were uh, bringing him out. Omer Reb Zeri says, Reb Zeri, Reb Yechon, and Alocha, Reb Shimon Gamliel, says Reb Zeri, that the Alocha is like Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel. Okay, that uh, I guess if guy number one sell, uh, uh, sells the property, it's sold. Even if there were avadim on the property, and by selling the property, he's freeing them. He's freeing them. You're not allowed to free avadim because the pasuk says, um, boim that You have to work them forever. Pshita. Well, this is obvious that uh, it's even a sale uh, when you know, even when there are avadim. But Ma'adutema may have thought. So, uh, who can say to who? Maybe, maybe it's guy number two saying to guy number one. Or maybe, one second, I need to actually look this up because that was unclear to me and I was at the Chasna and I couldn't look it up. One second. Okay, so it's the uh, guy number two saying to guy number one, like, hey, wait, the sale is no good because you can't, right, you can't just take the, uh, this property and, and, uh, in, which has avodim and freeing the avodim. You can't do in, in isur, right? So meaning, Amalei, uh, guy number two could say to guy number one, Lemebadi isur, lo yavinu It was not given to you to be able to do something also like freeing avodim. Kamash Malon. So what, um, what, uh, Reb Zera is saying, the name of Yochanan, that Allah said, Reb Shimon even in this case. Um, Rav Yosef says, Rav Yosef, um, Rav Yochanan, Allah, Rav Shimon Gamliel, Vafil Asan, Tachrich in the Mace. The Allah, Rav Shimon Gamliel, even if he ends up making the, I guess, property, um, 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 sh- shrouds for a mace. Now, shrouds for a mace are also Behano. So, Pshit, that should be obvious. Maudetema, Lishavinu, Isure, Ano, Lo Yaiveloch, Kamaj Malon. That this property was not given you, to you in order to make Isuri um, Hano out of it, um, and uh, therefore, right. So therefore, I may I don't know. What I was just saying, but but um, yeah, maybe guy number two could say guy number one. Hey, you kind of like used this property in an inappropriate way by making them into shrouds. Therefore, I don't know. I guess you shouldn't be able to sell them or something. Uh, you like misused it, and therefore your stuff that you did is like invalid. But Kamash Melinda, no, the sale still works. Okay, I hope I explained that correctly. Tosh of Nachum by Rav Chizda. Rav Nachum by Rav Chizda Darshind. Esrik Zeh Nosun Luchah B'Maton of Achrecha Leploni. All right. So, um, so Rav Nachum by Rav Chizda expounds that if uh, the initial guy says, I'm giving you this Esrik as a gift to guy number one, and then after you, it's going to go to guy number two. Okay? Not lo rishin v'yotzebo. If now, if guy number one takes the esrig and he uses it, you know, to be yot to the, the, the mitzvah of lulav and esrig. But the machlag is Rebbe Rav Shimon Gamliel. So we get to machlag to Rebbe Rav Shimon Gamliel about can you do that or not? Rebbe would say you can't. You know, he can't, uh, he can't use the esrig for, uh, dal, you know, for the mitzvah of dal minim. And Rav Shimon Gamliel says, yes. Ma'askaf Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak. Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak says, Ad kan lo pligi Rebbe Rav Shimon Gamliel hosom elo de ma'asavah kinin peis kinin aguf domi ma'asavah kinin peis lav kinin aguf domi. But, um, uh, but uh, Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak asks, he says, I don't understand. What is, what is using an esrig 
for Dalad Minim have to do with uh, the Machlokus in Rebbe of Shem Gamliel. The Machlokus in Rebbe of Shem Gamliel is with regard to Kinyan Paris ke Kinyan Aguf Domi. If all you have access to is the Paris, then the, does that mean that you have access to the Gufa Karka? But over here, Elohocho, but over here, how does, what is Kinyan Paris ke Kinyan? We're talking about an Esrig over here. What does Kinyan Paris ke Kinyan Aguf have to do with anything? Imepak Lenovic Bay Lema Yaiva Niele. If the initial guy was not giving the esrig to the to guy number one in order to use it for the mitzvah of dal aminim. Then what was he doing with with it bechlal? Of course, the the first guy can use it for dal aminim. No, of course, if, if the guy number one uses the esrig for dal aminim, is yotze. Macho but if he uh, sold it or ate it, bonul machlekes rebbe of shimon gamliel. Well, then we get the machlokes of rebbe of shimon gamliel, i.e. Um, I guess the fact that he has access to this esrig would that give him the right to sell it? Rebbe would say uh, um, uh, no, and Rebbe Shimon Gamil would say if he sold it, it is sold. Amar Rabba by Rebbe Huna Ha'achin Shekanu Esrig B'Tfusa Sabais. Oh, so if you have brothers, right? So the right, so Yaakov died, and now you have Ruvain and uh, Shimon, and let's say Ruvain, right? And they're and they're destroying him in the estate. So Ruvain takes an esrig and he uses it. Nitalo echot men, where my achin shakano esrig with fuzah vice, nitalo echot men. So if, you know, one of the brothers, Ruvain, so let's say Ruvain takes uh, one of the esrigim and he, um, so notal echot men v'yotzebo, and he used it for the mitzvah of Dalaminim. Im yocholo ochlo, if he would be able to eat it, i.e., if the brothers would be okay with that, the fact that he took a esrig and used it. Yotzu, then he's Yotzu the mitzvah vim la. But if they would not be okay with it, lo Yotzu, then he would not be Yotzu the mitzvah. V'davka deika esrig l'chol chad v'chad. So long as there are enough esrogim for uh, everybody to have. Because if there's only one esrog in the whole estate, well then he doesn't own the entire esrog because uh, you know the other brothers have you know. So if it's, if it's Reuben, so Shimon also has a portion in the esrog. But if there are multiple esrogim, so if he uses an esrog. Um, and I guess the other brother, you know, Shim, like if Reuben uses an esrog and Shim is okay with it, then he would be Yotze because it's entirely his esrog and there are other esrogim for Shimon. Omerov says, Rav, esrog ze nosun chob matar amenashe tachzirei uli. Oh, so says Rav, that um, if, if uh, you know, Shimon says to Reuben, I'm giving you this esrog as a gift, right? Because we'll kach them lochem by Yamarishin, right? On the first day of Sukkot, yeah, it has to be your esrog. Uh, your lulav, your esrig. So if Shimon gives an esrig to Reuven, he says, look, I'm giving it to you as a gift, but under the condition that you uh, return it to me. All right? So it's, I'm giving it to you as a gift. It's yours. You can use it for the mitzvah of the aluminum, but uh, you're going to have to return it to me. So if Reuven says, thank you very much, and he takes the esrig and he uses it for the mitzvah, if he returns it to Shimon, well, then he's yotze the mitzvah. If he doesn't return the esrig to Shimon, well then, lo, what? Lo zero, lo yotze. Then he's not yotze the mitzvah. And this teaches that a matona manas la achzir, a gift under the condition that it be returned, is considered a gift, right? So when Shimon gives uh, the esrig to Reuven, and he says, and then give it back to me afterwards, or I'm giving it to you, I'm giving you this esrog under the condition that you give it back to me, that uh, that works, because it's a matono amenas lachzir, matono amenas lachzir, shmo matono uh, is in fact considered a proper gift, and therefore it's considered ruvains uh, to be yotze the mitzvah with. Uh, okay, so this next sugya I learned with Jones Rabinowitz and, um, and uh, Micha Azriel um, Gordon. There was a woman who had a palm tree in the land of Bevai Bar Abai. And every time she went to Chap dates, Havakopri Lava, Bevai Bar Abai would get upset. So she said, All right, this is crazy. So, he, so she uh, sold the uh, uh, tree to uh, Bevai Bar Abai. Uh, so long as he's alive, once he's dead, it'll go back to her. So basically, he, he sold her. He sold. She sold Rebbe by by the Paris. Also, you aknai niyale live no coin, and he was makne the tree to Rebbe by by was makne the tree to his son. Or mefunibed the Yeshua, 
And Rav Funi Bred Veshua says, "Mishum to also be muloi, hamisu mile muliyisa." Wait, let me make sure that I I was translating this as because you come from cut off people, you um, say cut off stuff. Well, how do they? How do they? Because um, you come from mamlites, you therefore state blemished arguments. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, they. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Right. I saw that in Rajbam. I wasn't sure. Uh huh. So Mimulai is a reference to Mamlites. It's this like place called Mamla or something. Um, all right. So because you come from Mimulai, you um, say Divrei Mulaim. What was it? Mulyasa Afi. All right. I was just Divrei Mile Mulyasa. Like I think it's like cut off silly things. Meaning, uh, Rebbe Barabai, I guess, was the son of Abai. Now Abai comes from Eli. Eli was cursed that um, all of his uh, children will be kind of like you know cut off and, and die young. So basically, he was saying that. Um, so, so Rav Huna Bede Yeshua says to Rav Huna Bede Yeshua, like, what the heck are you doing? That when Rav Huna Bede says that if the initial person says to guy number one, I'm giving you this property, and then after you die, right, you, you're going to get get my estate, estate, and after you die, it'll go to guy number two. So Rav Huna Bede says in that case, if guy number one sells it, it's okay, it's sold, but the evidence. But that's only when the stipulation was that the initial guy says it's going to go to guy number one, and then after you, it's going to go to guy number two. Here, the initial person is saying, it goes to you, and then after you, it goes back to me. So when it says that it goes back to me, then he has no, you know, by by in this case, has no right to sell it to anybody else or to give it to anybody else. Amarav says, Amarav Nachman, Shur ze nosun l'cha bim matono, amrash tachzreyu li. Rav says, name of Nachman, that this so in the scenario where, um, you know, Shimon says that I'm giving you this ox as a gift on the condition that you return the ox to me. Okay, so Reuven says, thank you. Hekdisho ve'achziro. Reuven was makdish the ox and then returned it to Shimon. Now now that it's hekdish, it's also ba'no. So that meaning, Shimon says, I'm giving you this ox, you know, on the condition that you return it to me. Reuven returned it to him, but as hekdish. Which means Shimon can't actually use it anymore. So is that considered returning it or not? So as a reason, muktoshu muxer. So we say, well, it's hektish because Ruven was maktish it, and it's muxer. It's returned as well. Amar le Rav le Rav Nachman, Maya Hadri. Rav says to Rav Nachman, I don't understand. But what is being returned? I mean, he gave him a cow and he got back an unusable cow. So Amar le Umay Chasrei. Oh no, so you can skip those words. Hello, Amr Vashu, Rather says Ravashu Chazin, and we see. If he, if Shimon simply said, "I'm giving you this ox under the condition that you return that that you return it," Well, in that case, you know, Ruvain was mocked the ship, but then he returned it. Leave says under the condition that you return it to me. Well, me did the Chazile Kamale is saying something that is fit. I mean, he returned to me something that is fit for me to use. And if he's mocked the ship, then it's not fit for him to use because it's also by no. All right, I'm going to stop here. I'm talking very tired. I didn't really sleep much last night. I should probably make another coffee. Um, but yeah, uh, we're doing more of this like Rebbe and Rabshim and Gamliel stuff. But Kinin Paris, Kinin Aguftam, and peace out.